process for those people who do not have and cannot reasonably obtain a photo ID. So these are people who have transportation burdens, who have work obligations, who have low income, who have barriers to getting one of these photo IDs. That's what the reasonable impediment, that's what it's called, process is for. It's not for people who have IDs but left them at home. It's not for people who are ideologically opposed to the photo ID law. It is for people who do not have and cannot obtain a photo ID. So as people are walking in, I mean, one of the other things you can say is, do you have your ID ready to go to vote? And, and if people have a question and say, well, I don't have a photo ID, but I have an alternative ID, you can answer questions about what that means for them. One thing that's very important that we're asking people to do as they're standing within the 100 um, foot buffer is listen to what poll officials are saying. There have been a number of counties that have continued to flout that the photo ID is what's required. And they have not said at the same time, if you have a photo ID, get it out and get it ready. But if you don't have one, here's an alternative process. You wanna be making sure that all the literature and all the poll officials are saying both things. Here's a photo ID requirement or bring, pull out your photo ID if you have it. But if you do not have it, pull out one of the alternative IDs um, as you're standing in line. We have heard from a number of different counties, Harris, Travis, um, the Dallas County with poll officials just saying, get your photo ID out as people are standing in line to vote. That is incomplete information and it actually runs afoul of the federal court order. Um, so again, there are seven forms of photo ID. They can be expired up to four years. They have to have um, your name and an address on it. The address on your photo ID does not have to match the address that's on the voter list. One other thing that's important is if you lost your ID, if you had it stolen, if it was destroyed, you don't possess it for purposes of voting. So you are the type of person who can take advantage of the alternative process because you don't actually possess it for purposes of voting. Now, if you interact with voters and they say, again, I don't have one of the seven forms of photo ID, I can't reasonably get it. These are the people who have to fill out a declaration. The declaration says, I am who I say that I am. I don't have one of the seven forms of photo ID. And here's my reason why. Once a voter gives that reason why, they cannot be questioned about it. So for example, if a poll official says, well, how do you not have a photo ID? How'd you get to this polling precinct? They are not allowed to ask that question. They are not allowed to second guess that you have a reasonable impediment. They're also not allowed to um, question you why you don't have a photo ID. They should ask the voter, do you have a photo ID? The answer is no. Okay, well, here's an alternative process. There's a declaration you have to fill out, and you also have to show a number of other supporting documents. These supporting documents can be a utility bill. They can be a, a government check. It can be a bank statement. It could be a license from out of state. It could be a whole host of other things that are again on these materials that I um, sent to you. So voters must be aware of both processes. But again, we don't want voters who have the photo ID but just left it at home or have the photo ID in their wallet and they're just like, I think the photo ID law is stupid or illegal or discriminatory to use the process because they, people are signing a declaration under penalty of perjury that they do not have and cannot reasonably obtain one of the photo IDs. Again, these alternative IDs um, for the reasonable impediment process, like the photo ID, is that they have to have a name and an address. That address doesn't have to match what's on the voter rolls. So basically, none of the IDs that you show on election day, whether they're the photo ID or the non-photo ID, have to have an address that matches the rule. It just has to basically prove that you are who you say you are. The impediment process, once they filled it out, how are they assured that their votes are So they, okay, the very important question, because I missed this. With the, with the impediment process, you get a regular ballot, right? So it's the same ballot that if you have a photo ID, you get, and that ballot should count. There should be no way that it doesn't count because it's a regular ballot. So that's very important that voters understand that just because they're doing this alternative process, they don't do a provisional ballot. They get a regular ballot. 
And that's very important to emphasize. Um, that is what the federal report provides. Are there any questions about the ID requirements? Again, the issues that we've seen in early voting are people are standing in line and poll workers come out as people are getting ready to get to the desk and they say, have your photo ID out. If you hear that, you should go inside and let the um, officials inside know that poll workers are giving incomplete information because what they should be telling voters is have your ID ready. If that's a photo ID, have that out. If it's an alternative ID, have that out. And the reason why they're telling that is they're trying to move the process along as people get to the polling thing. But it cannot be only about photo ID. It needs to be both sets of information. Yes, ma'am. So they can verify their address, but that, but the ID that they're showing you, exactly. So neither the photo ID or the 